so welcome. Our, all, all of our series are under uh, Real Health Talks, and you know our, our goals are always to be able to reach you guys, bring topics that people are interested in, and then give action steps along the way so that you're able to you know, really take health into your own hands. And so this is what you're here for, um, why your body hurts at work, and strategies to, to fix it. And we're really focusing on the spine and this time. Um, and then two weeks from now is when we're going to do the next Tuesday, November 19th at 6.30 as well will be part two. There we'll focus more on extremities, so arms and legs. What's, what, what's relevant with the spine is that you can't really address anything with the appendages if you, if you have not addressed the spine. So this is where we, where we start. So disclaimer. <laughs> this is for informational purposes. You assume responsibility for what you do with the information that you um, that you receive here. We're not diagnosing or treating any medical conditions. We're not providing information. Um, we do suggest that you consult a health professional in a treatment capacity if you do have um, significant, chronic, just like a really serious pain problem. This is informational uh, informational strategies being presented for you know keeping yourself feeling more comfortable in your body at work. Mm -hmm. right. All right, so basically we're going to go we're, we're going to keep the lecture part brief because we really want to get into all, you know, the, the movement patterns that we're going to teach you. But we're going to we're going to hop in on some key concepts here, one being cellular metabolism, what that means for pain, normal body function, and then gravity, postural positions, and the slippery slope to postural dysfunction and pain. Um, so, anything else you want to say around and hop right into it? So we're going to keep lecture we can, short. We can move right to it. All right, take it away. So, this is where you can get out your notes, your, your <laughs> pen and paper, and you'll have a quiz on cellular metabolism when we're done. Um, there's a lot going on in, in our bodies and our cells. Um, cellular metabolism is something that's affected by sustained compression from sitting, and it's happening to us in the workplace where we have a sedentary lifestyle, we're sitting at our desks. Um, when that is sustained over time, we end up with a reduction in circulatory efficiency, which we term ischemia. It basically means that soft tissue gets knotted up and the blood flow to that tissue carrying nutrients, fresh nutrients to those cells for repair and nourishment and function is impeded and metabolic wastes that are supposed to be moving away from those cells are that that blood flow out of those cells is not happening um, as well and then we end up with tightness, and discomfort in those areas, your neck, your low back from a sitting position, hips, shoulders. Um, then we have inflammation. There's metabolic waste in those tissues, not circulating out properly. Um, you can have low grade inflammation, you can have pain, you can have the predisposition to injury and not even really be aware of it. Um, so yeah, that's the next slide. Yeah, here. and and another quick thing before yeah, we sir. leave this slide is that, you know, our bodies are are highly adaptable. Our our bodies are incredibly smart at at reorganizing and helping you keep at your best. And what this ends up doing, this kind of cycle, this 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 kind of vicious cycle where you're slowing down blood and you have build up of debris and then you have inflammation and then it just perpetuates and it de decreases the body's adaptability. And therefore, if you predispose yourself to the to injury in the future, even though maybe the pain is slowly building over time or the dysfunction is slowly building on time, and you think I'm okay, I'm okay, but you're you're further and further perpetuating the cycle, and then leading to more uh, instability. So, quick mention on posture fundamentals and what is normal, what 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 it should be, and so. If you look at the spine, you see very clearly here that you've got these beautiful S curves, right? You've got a little sa the sacrum curve here, but in this nice lumbar curve in the low back, the th 
thoracic spine has a backwards curve, and then the neck should also be slightly curved. And I think this is a really interesting topic because in relationship to sitting and what our spinal anatomy is, is we're designed to be standing. Our, our anatomy has developed that way or was given to us that way, however you like to look at it. And so when we actually get to a sitting posture, we're taking this curve and we're actually reducing it, right? So we're putting ourselves in a position where we're not at biomechanical advantage. Our bodies were developed to be upright. And so, and, and the other interesting thing, and we're gonna focus on the spine uh, today, like we already said, um, and the other interesting concept is in natural medicine, sorry, I'm standing right, right in your leg. In natural medicine, we always like to talk about how everybody everybody is different and treatment styles are all different and catered to the individual. And that is very true. But when it comes to biomechanics, it's actually very interesting because we all have the same biomechanics as they should be functioning properly, right? So our struggle is all the same. We all relate to gravity. We all have this struggle. And so we all have the same predispositions to dysfunction. So it's no wonder if you're sitting in a, in a, in a sitting position all the time that you're reducing the normal function and adaptability of the spine. Um, and you can even see, so we put this in here for comparison, the human spine is curved like this to, to withstand compressive force in this direction. You're, it's allowing force to come through here and it distributes force. Mm -hmm. For example, if you look at a primate spine, it's curved because their primary position of movement is they can stand on two legs, but really their ambulation style is using their arms, right? So that's not, that's not the case for us. We're on two legs. Um, so those are some really important concepts about gravity and posture as it should be. Um, do you have something else to say here before we move on? Shoulder girdle, upper extremity, foot to pelvis, part two, November 19. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> all right. So, tying all those concepts together. You want to mm. take it away? <clears throat> well, that's a good picture, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it says a lot about what we're, what we're experiencing culturally in, a, in the workplace. Um, well, factors, you know, prolonged sitting, prolonged standing, prolonged any position, prolonged static compression. We have the words repetitive stress there. Um, most of the time we think about repetitive stress as somebody, you know, in a factory, like moving things again, again, doing something again, again, again. Um, we could have right next to that compressive, sustained compressive force in suboptimal positions. Um, most chairs, and so, you know, we have this list down here of some of the common problems that can be arising from that prolonged sitting and standing. Um, most chairs actually tilt the pelvis backward and predispose the low, the low back, check this thing out. Will this work on that? Well, I tried. So <laughs> the low back area, most chairs will actually tilt a little bit down like this. And that low back area curves backward. Can we go to that previous slide? Sure thing. Whereas in sitting and standing, what nature intended, because it's really how you remain pain free in your body through use, um, there's that inward curve that the lumbar spine likes to have. Can we go back to, oh, right here. So here, we got that golem like position. Let's go to that other slide if we could. Forward? Yeah, yeah. So back to this. So when we adapt to something that looks like this and we're sustaining hours and hours and hours of our time there, um, we're really predisposed to an injury. Because the body doesn't complain. We adapt. You know, women's shoes, right? Or Nikes that have very pointy sneaker toes. The shoe, you know, it... it it compresses the foot and holds it down. We adapt. We're like, oh, my shoes look great. I'm fine. 
well, here I have to work. I'm at my desk. I can't complain. I have to just go through with it. And then we're predisposed to some injury or some nagging chronic pain that you have to, you know, learn to ignore. So we are we're we're experiencing this. It's happening to us. It's not our fault. We sustain a lot of time in front of the computer screen, and this is this gives you an image of what we're looking to provide you with tools or antidotes for. The other thing is that in clinic, we'll get patients who have pain conditions and they'll say something like, Quinn, what is the position for me to be working in all day? And the answer is that change of position, getting up and applying an antidote on a regular basis and having postural awareness while you're sitting in a chair, while you're at your standing desk, can enable you to go through the motions of life and, and avoid adapting to a suboptimal um, condition, you know. Yeah, and I think also really important to mention here, based on the concept of re repetitive stress, is that, you know, it's, it's the idea of the straw that breaks the camel's back at some point. I'm sure you've heard this story before, or, or it's happened to you where it's like, oh man, I blew up my back, I can barely move, and I was only brushing my teeth, or I was shaving my legs, right? These are all very benign activities that shouldn't be causing pain. They shouldn't cause your, your back to blow out, but they do because of repetitive stress. The body is finally just reaches the point where it goes, I can't take it anymore, and it will go through this um, injury phase, and it actually does it in order to restructure tissue, because it's like, enough of this, we're gonna restructure our tissues, right? So um, so that's a really relevant conversation and, and I'm sure it's happened to you or, or to somebody you know. Um, and the other thing that I think is really interesting because uh, a major problem that people have is, is something like disc herniations or compressed or nerve compression, especially in the low back, the neck too, but in the low back, because if you, if you think about the spine curving forward like that, when the spine is normal and curved, the compressive forces go down through the facet joints. It's balanced between the joints of the spine and the discs of the spine. That's how it's designed to be. But when you're sitting all the way to your upper body, which is significant, right? It's at least half your weight. Um, it now is compressing through that low back area and, and it's coming through this front part, which is pushing the disc material back, right? So no yeah. longer is it like this and going straight through, but it's pushing back and so your material is going this way, right? And so that's really not great, especially if you're predisposed to, <laughs> to back issues, right? So that's a very common thing for people who sit long periods of time and that's the conversation of the straw that breaks, breaks the camel's back where their back goes out and now they have disc herniation. It's a very, very common thing. Um, so, yeah. Next one. Let's move on to, oh, this was just some, an interesting yeah, slide. Those are um, some good images. Yeah, you wanna go for it? Uh, in the past 15 years, we've seen more, um, more of the same thing that we were just talking about with the lumbar spine, with your low back in the chair, how it kind of goes backward. Like, sorry about that. Um, if I were to demo that, you know, it's like the tail's tucked under and the, the spine is kind of collapsing that way. We see that with uh, cell phone use in the past 15 years with more, um, you know, the cell phone being a prominent feature of day-to-day -day life everywhere. Everybody's got one in their back pocket. We have that going on with the neck. Um, you can see in this, this, po this position, um, or this image, this woman actually has a little backward lean, a little bit of a backward lean. It's hard to sit upright all day and maintain a lumbar curve sitting upright. Nature doesn't intend that. Nature but some doesn't of the time, sitting a lot of periods of time. But some of the time that's good, and then some of the time relaxing, but changing positions is a good strategy. And you know, for people that listen to their bodies, they tend to do that because it's like, oh, I need to change my position to be more comfortable. Um, and this image also looks like it's from maybe the 80s. Um, <laughs> but you know, she, she's, 
she's, she's a little better off than we are staring from our golem-like positions down at the laptop. Um, but you know, this, this is sort of like, we could insert a standing desk photo here. You know, if you have a standing desk and your hands are right about here and then maybe you have a stool to sit on, you know, that, that would be something that'd be helpful. Posture here, do you want to talk yeah, about this? It's the idea that the eyes, the eyes being as level as possible to the screen you're working on is very advantageous for, mm. for the neck. Mm -hmm. Because, we'll go to the picture on top instead, um, when your neck, so, so your neck, your, your head has a general weight of around 10 to 12 pounds. That's the actual anatomical weight of your head. And when it is in line with the, in its normal S curves, it is actually that weight, and that's what your neck is sustaining. But as you tilt the head farther and farther forward, you're actually creating this tension line here where you're, it ends up creating an effect where your head becomes heavier and heavier and heavier. And then it's no wonder. So now your, your upper traps, the upper back here, is now thinking, okay, holy moly, this is really heavy. And so then it's no wonder that this kind of action leads to really tight upper traps. A lot of people, this is a pain zone, big time. Um, and it's because of looking down at computer screens, partly, or phones. Um, and also the scalenes get really tight, so everything in here is really sore. So this is a major proponent of neck pain. Um, so. Screens at eye level is really important. That's why I like that picture, even though it's an 80s computer. <laughs> Hopefully we can find some solutions. So, um, awareness, posture, yeah. Yeah, awareness of the pelvis and um, posture alignment with the spinal curves. Um, the, we're gonna teach you that. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of this. This good posture, to me he looks a little stiff. You <laughs> he know? He does look a little rigid. <laughs> um, but you know the idea with good posture would be that there's a there's a, a, a cosageal a sacral cosageal curve here in the pelvis where that SI joint is, and then there's an there's an inward curve in the low back, and then there's an outward curve in the upper back, and then again there's an inward curve in the neck area, the cervical and spine. And what that will effectively do is line your ear. It's called the plumb line. It's lining your ear to the shoulder to the hip, mm -hmm. down through the major weight bearing of the heel. Um, so as far as sitting and causing the pelvis to tuck under, this is kind of a, a stupid picture uh, because <laughs> nobody really walks like that. But what does happen is instead of walking like this, instead of instead of having this nice curve here, it ends up being like this, right, where we're tucked under, and and that's the thing. So you don't end up, end up looking like that. You end up in this position where you've got yeah. a uh, butt tuck. And that's that that makes the spine flat, mimicking sitting. Right, mimicking that sort of crouched sitting yeah. that happens when you're you've been there for a really long time. You're really fatigued, right? Yeah. Um, lumbar 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 lordosis. That's you know some people have you know this kind of thing going on. That's mainly from tight hips. Yeah. Kyphosis, thoracic humping, hunching. Um, you know, that's another thing. These are just sort of reference points for where your body is in space yeah. when we do this awareness exercise that we're going to do from sitting to standing. All right. Um, anything more you want to say? No, I'm, I'm, I'm done with those. I think we're good. And we're right on time. We said if we didn't get to exercises by, by seven, we would need to hustle. So, perfect. Now the fun part. So this is where we're going to start teaching you some stuff. Yeah. So. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so you're sitting in a chair. Maybe you can pull your chair away from the table. And I'm going to turn a little sideways like this for you. And I will face you so that you get kind of a couple vantage points here. So when you're in a chair at work, I mean, sometimes it's nice to be here, kind of like that woman was with her pelvis. She's a little back, she's rested, because you can't be here all day. And it's kind of hard to work with It here. won't work like this all day. You might pull your chair in. So this is, I'm just making the point of changing positions is useful. But you can't be here all day either. You have to change positions. 
because sitting in a chair and you can feel these chairs they have they're just like any other chair they have a a tilt that if you're if you're facing the direction I'm facing it tilts your pelvis back so in order to establish a lumbar curve which this this diagram shows you, it's easier to do it if you step forward a bit and sit on the edge of the seat. So for, for clarification, sorry, I don't yeah. mean yeah, to no, interrupt you. No, the first it. thing we're going to show you is a few relief postures, right? So it's not always possible that you can get up. Right. If, you're, if you're, you know, at a conference or something or you're in a meeting, you can't just get up and walk around the room, right? So this first position, which Quinn is going to talk us through, is called Brewer's position. Um, and it's a relief posture in a sitting position. Right, that's its purpose. So. Yeah. So, to do this, to you, you've been there for a while, you need a little bit of a check-in, you're gonna Could move you forward. Could you move the laptop that I'm oh. right in my Yeah, could even like, you. we're gonna be on the slide for a while. We even yeah, we can just kinda. Thank you. <laughs> All right, is that good? Yeah. So, you're forward on your chair. So on the edge, yeah, a little more forward on the edge. The knees can come a little bit apart. Wider is better. And you're, you, you could actually, with your hand, take your, your glute, your butt, and untuck it. And then feel that bone of your sit bone sitting on the chair. Kind so of like you're perched right on You're perched kind of. And then if you, if you take the back of your hand and you can reach to your low back, there should be some somewhat of an inward curve. Hopefully moving more closely to that than when you were here, right? Keep talking through. So, <clears throat> so scoot forward on your chair a little bit more so you're perched right on the end. Open your knees a little bit more. The idea of core activation is something that is talked about. Um, abdominal core activation is something that engaging to 20% is, is good. When you're standing, you're lengthening, you're having that length in the body. But you're not clenching the abs, right? So that's it. It's about tucking. And then what we can do once we have our base set up is take a breath, you're checking in with your core, you're having a sense of elongation, and elongation in the front of the body. So the back, my back is actually doing this. I'm actually doing this to open and lengthen that, but just in a sitting position. And so the science behind this too is that if we're if we're sitting in a position where we're, we're tucked forward, by actually see this guy is is way into that into that curve, by actually activating extensors and going even a little bit farther, you wouldn't sit like this, mm -hmm. right? But you're you're exaggerating into extension because you're activating the extensors, and so you're saying this we're we're opening in this direction, right? So. You perch up to the edge of your chair, knees apart, toes apart, and you're taking a few nice breaths in. And as you're doing so, you're allowing the chest to lift up and the low back to feel elongated. And then the arms are out either on, on your palms, hanging off to the side. And in this position, you're just gonna take three good breaths. You're feeling the breath, feeling and elongating. And on the out breath, You've got a little tone in the abdomen so that you're feeling that nice uh, stability in your lumbar spine. So the arms, you may also, you know, let's say you've been there, you've been there for an hour at your desk and you're ready to do a self check-in and, and apply the antidote to, you know, computer. If you look at the shoulders that are working on the computer, they're like this. You're here. Mm -hmm. This is that antidote. It's actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. If you turn that arm out as you're lengthening the spine, as you're lengthening the front of the body and opening, you can also yeah. open the palms by taking the fingers as far apart from one another as, as you can. And, and then yeah. ease off, take a breath, and then do that maybe five times. Yeah. Right. And you know, and if you're, I mean, we 
this is a cultural thing, right? We have to sit at a desk all the time too when we're working on stuff. I mean, I feel a, a tightness all through here when I do this because I'm opening this area. And, and one of my problems is that I don't have a, a really good lumbar curve. It's something that I work on all the time. So for me, this is like, I feel stretched all the way up my neck and down my arm. That's me, it might be something different for you. Um, so do you guys have any questions on this? So this would be good for sitting on an airplane or even driving too. Right? Yeah, so the thing about driving, that's an awesome question. <laughs> it's an awesome question. So with driving, the thing that's gonna help you keep a lumbar curve is actually, and you were sitting this way before, which is great, is you push your butt as far back into the seat as possible because then it puts you in a position to be perched. It oh, shouldn't be hard to sit up straight. Yeah, yeah. And this is something we, we, just, we were reminding ourselves not to forget, is the conversation of holding your shoulders back. Super misnomer, right? Because you shouldn't ever have to hold your shoulders back. Your shoulders are designed to hang off of your body. They're attached, the scapula is not even, a, the, the major mover of your shoulder girdle isn't attached osseously to anything on the back. It's floating around in muscles. So your shoulders are designed to hang, right? So the idea of holding your shoulders back is a total misnomer because if you have a lumbar curve, your shoulders will hang there. You notice that if you're standing, it's much easier to hold your shoulders back <coughs> because that's where they're designed to be. So driving and on planes, pushing your butt as far back into the crack as possible, and then sitting up straight. So for most of us, it's going to mean, right, pulling your chair forward in the car. <laughs> I, have a, I have a wedge so that I'm actually slanted forwards rather than back, mm. and that seems to help with the desk. Mm. Uh, so you put the wedge with the slim side forward so that I'm kind of at an angle like that. You put the wedge under under your where you're sitting on what you're sitting yes, on to. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I mean that that kind of flattens it out rather than. Doesn't right. It, it, it actually right. tilts your your yeah. pelvis forward a little, so you would have some lumbar curve. Yeah. Yeah. So that this should be even easier for you to implement with that because you'll find that if you perch onto that, you'll easily be sitting up. And once you do this position, you'll find that you know yeah. when you're when you're at your desk, you'll. Do your thing, take a couple nice breaths. And then when you get back to it, you're gonna be like, all right, and your shoulders are gonna be sitting here all nice and you're gonna be doing work and you're gonna be propped here. You're gonna be doing your thing and it's not like you're doing it and all of a sudden you're like, oh, my, my back is sore. And, and you know, and it's the check-in. And when you notice those things happening in your body, that's when you gotta go, okay. And even just take, a, even just take one minute, you know, to, to take nice breaths and check in with your body. And I would add again, context for this is, this is an antidote position or, or action that you can do in a chair. Yeah. You may want to get up and walk around the building. Totally. You know, or, and do some of the five things that we're gonna do. They're just like five easy things to do to keep your body open and to mitigate tension that's going to gather in areas if all you did all day long was be stuck in the chair mm -hmm. right so so this is like this this is we're also moving to standing with us now mm -hmm. so, so are there questions so that was a good question about the car and the plane yeah, you can't get up <laughs> yeah the other, you really can the other strategy with stop, yeah. being contained in a car or an airplane in those it's like those seated positions we were talking about earlier before yes. we started, right? If you're going to be there for a sustained period of time, um, knowingly beforehand, what you can do is more exercise or like the strategy. If I'm going to be on a plane for eight hours, I am... He's the, the guy in the airport doing the exercises. <laughs> in the airport, but also the day before, I make sure that I'm not in stasis that yeah. entire day right it's really not helpful if you know if i'm working on my computer running a business all day long getting plenty of screen tan you know what i'm saying um and then get on the plane did you guys get that the screen tan that was, <laughs> come on um and then i'm on a plane for eight hours the next day and 
You know what I mean? So if I can open my hips, if I can walk, if I can move my blood, if I can get a good amount of sleep, then I, I can deal with that tightness of being there. And then I'll be the weird guy who's standing up in the aisle of the plane, <laughs> opening his hips, you know, just doing like a warrior two position oh kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, we're gonna go to standing now or? Yeah, let's talk you... about, um, so the, the idea of transitioning from <clears throat> sitting to standing, it's just a, a biomechanical conversation about what's the safest way to do it. Um, so since you're in great view, why don't you show us? Um, you know who I have, have a really good understanding of going from a seated or squat, like a bent knee down position to standing is power lifters because they keep their low back engaged. If they mess up and go to that, that hunched position while they're pulling up hundreds of pounds of weight, if they, you, you, if you watch some video of it, it's actually yeah. really interesting. They'll be, they'll be going, going, and then oh, they, they actually lose their back tone, and they will drop that bar and step away from it and walk away like this. It's really interesting. So that's just a, um, that's an extreme version of what we're doing. We're bearing weight, but not from the And this is a body. great thing. So this is not just transitioning from sitting to standing. This is picking things up that are maybe right. slightly heavier than you might want them to be. Like, you know, maybe your cat needs to go on a diet or something, <laughs> right? When you go to pick that cat up, you want to have your back in a good position. And this is what's going to do it. So you're basically standing with Bruger's position, right? You're basically, you're here. You're going to have that length and engagement in the core, and then you're gonna stand up. So let's do that. <laughs> and it's the idea of a, an active hip hinge as well. So when you're sitting back down, yeah, like you're not bending your this, back. Yeah. This hip yeah. hinge idea, where you have some engagement in the low back, is very helpful to not incurring an injury in your low back when yep. you're doing things. A helpful, things. a helpful conversation about your back is if you think about sitting or bending, so for us as acupuncturists, we find that we have a table, so we're bent over patients, right? So I'll catch myself sometimes, it's the end of the day and I'm getting tired and I'm going, I'm going like this, like I'm putting needles in and my back mm -hmm. is right like this, right? No. That's, that's what you do not want yeah, to do because you want to be thinking about your spine in that S curve in all your positions, right? So if you're bending over, you want your back to look as if you were standing. That's what that hip hinge is that Quinn was just doing, right? So when, then when you go sit down, you, you're, not, you're not going like this. You're not hunching down and yeah. sitting in the chair. You're going to hip hinge and sit down, right? So it requires more work. Right, but, you know, safety first. <laughs> so all I have to do is extend from the, like, sun salutation. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. I didn't use yeah. it at home, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have standing, and we're gonna do some awareness with where the pelvis yeah. is. You wanted to leave that, right? Sure. Go for it. Um, all right, so we've talked about the back being great sitting, we've talked about standing up and hip hinging. Mm -hmm. So. The idea of standing, so it kind of goes back to that visual of that guy standing in a bunch of weird positions. And it's really helpful to know where your pelvis is in space and what it's doing. So what that means is if you think about your pelvis, like the picture of that guy, you don't want it to be too far forward and you don't want it to be too far backwards. So let's do it. Let's, let's do it all together. It'll be fun. So if you put your hands right on top of the, the iliac crests here, right? So you can kind of move around. And you notice where, where it is, right? Is it too far forward? Is it too far backwards? And a good gauge to kind of notice what's going on is you think about, think about your pelvis like a pail of water. If it's in a neutral position, it's holding all of its kinetic energy in one place. It's not losing energy. Whereas if you're too far forward, you're gonna be, it's spilling water out the front now, right? You're, you, you've lost kinetic chain advantage and it's gonna cost you energy. It's gonna, you're gonna be fatigued by the end of the day, maybe pain, right? So if you're too far forward, you're losing energy out the front. If you're too far backwards and you've got this butt tuck thing, you're spilling water out the back, right? So now you've got the kinetic chain in the back is going to fatigue and become vulnerable. 
So you can stand there, kind of move your pelvis, just, just move it back and forth. See what that feels like. Mm-hmm. Tucking under. And then just kind of come to a position that feels right in the middle. And that's how you can check in on what your pelvis is doing if you're getting fatigued. And that's the basics of belly dancing also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so that's just some simple. And so if you find yourself at, in a position where you are standing long term, like these are the people who are hostesses or, um, or they're, they're at a catering event or bartender or whatever, right? Cashier. So you're, mm. Cashier. Yeah. We're standing for long periods of time. What you absolutely want to avoid is finding yourself disproportionately <laughs> weighing on one side or the other. And so it's going to happen. You know, you're going to be talking and you're going to be animated and you're off to one side. But the best thing to do, especially if you're in action, if you're moving things across the line, is keeping your pelvis oriented in this neutral way. So you can be moving but what you're not doing is shifting the pelvis or shifting the pelvis and so letting it drop letting one side drop forward you're staying stable so it's kind of like are there any yoga practitioners in here right you're you're shifting your weight you're you're never you're never breaking your pelvis's alignment with itself in order to get to a pose if you can't get into a pose that's as far as you go in that pose until you get better right so engaging and staying um, keeping your core engaged is actually really important to knowing where your pelvis is in space too. So if you're moving things along, you're staying in line and you're not breaking, you're not breaking that. Um, movements. Movements. Ready? Yay. All right. all right. So we have, this is, this is my favorite. This is what I did all the time when I was in school studying nonstop. You're sitting in lecture all day. So I'm going to show you really quick the five sequences, and you have them right in front of you. So this, it's, it's good to do. You can stand up, go to the bathroom, walk around for a second or something. And then I'll show you really quick, and then we'll kind of talk about how to do them so safely. So she's going to run through them, one, two, three, four, yep. five. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go through them as a group. Yeah. One, and then the next one, and then yep. the next one. Cool. So... The first two are to wake up the pelvis, wake up the front and the back to get the, get the blood flowing through here, which is super important if you're sitting long term. The other two kind of wake up the upper back and shoulders. And then the last one is a chest opener. So the first one is a nice easy squat where you're squatting and bring your arms up at the same time. Remember, we're keeping our back correct. Sideways. So use that hip hinge like we were talking about. She's folding at the hip. Okay. okay, so you're going to be doing a series of those. The next we're doing a half lunge. I put mini lunge on there, but a half lunge where you're just, you're getting in a stance that you know works for you, not too far, not too close, and you're just falling into it. So we're not doing a lunge. This is very much just sinking in so that you're stretching this part and engaging the quad. So this is all about the hip flexors, okay? So you're going to be doing that on each side. Then the ski poles, right? So this is straight up getting your feet nice and easy position and moving the hands back and forth and the transition is intentional right this isn't a this isn't an arm swing this is you're bringing your arms back back forward forward each transition is intentional you've got some gusto behind this right i'm starting to sweat <laughs> all right so the next one is uh, an arm press an overhead press so just you can actually I like to get in kind of an athletic stance when I do stuff like this it just makes it more engaging and you're just pressing overhead and you're squeezing on the way down here and pressing up squeezing so this is going to activate the scapula mm -hmm. right so our the, our shoulders have been forward like this we're saying squeezing down and back right so pressing pressing and then the last one is a it's actually a qigong um, set and it's it's really really nice to open the chest and it helps with breathing it helps with relaxation it helps with tight pecs which is you know forward and so we're starting with the arms out like this and you're just opening and as you're opening you're leading with the thumbs so the thumbs end up backwards right and you likely feel some tension in you know or you may you may not right and so you're coming in breath in 
Opening and out. And it doesn't have to be precisely with the breath. Using the breath is good, but if you want to do it nice and slow, you're not going to do, be able to do it with the breath. But if you want to do it with the breath, that's also excellent. Right? So, once you stand up, drink some water, maybe walk a little bit, and then you're basically... I want to talk about the squat for one more second because this can get people in trouble, especially if you're not used to it. When you're doing a squat, you actually want your feet to be slightly wider than the hip, right? Because this is, it's really supporting. So your knees should be pointing outwards. Women have a tendency to have the knees fall in, right? We have wider hip girdles than men. Right, so we have a tendency for this. So we're trying to do squats. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I ask somebody to show me their squat, women, and it's like this, right? The knees are straight ahead. That's, that's gonna get you in trouble. If you think about women when you're socialized growing up as girls, you're taught to cross your legs. So this is very commonly seen, but getting the knees out. Right, is thick. which is why that sitting position too, and I, I tell people, I'm like, all right, it's not going to be a very ladylike posture, but you got to put your knees out. out. you got to send them out because it's going to relax the back. Anyway, so your feet are going to be wider than your hip, and your knees should be pointed outwards. Your toes also slightly outwards. And look at your toes. See where they are. You'll know that if your hip is a little bit off, it's because you look down, and all of a sudden, you're, like one foot is, is you know, pointing this way, and one is pointing this way, right? One is way more rotated. Or maybe your one is way back here and you don't even notice, right? So make sure you look at your feet and line them up so that they're, they're so that your pelvis is going to be stable as possible. And then from here, keeping your back nice and curved and hip hinging into the squat, not tucking, right? You don't want to be tucking into a squat, right? So, ready? The squats. So start slow. The arms come up when we do it. I like to bring the arms up. You don't have to if it's hard. Good. And you can do this 10 times, 15 times, whatever it feels like. So when you're here, what I want to point out is on the way up, you want to be squeezing with your butt, right? You're, you want to, women also tend to be quad dominant. You want to push through here, but you want to feel your butt cheeks squeeze. That's what we're doing in a squat is we're extending, right? So hip hinging back, squeeze with the butt. Good. This is going to be on TV. It's going to be great. <laughs> All right. So good. So I like to, I tend to do it fast because I like to feel like, whew, like I'm getting the blood pumping, right? Good. I like it. Looks good. Does everyone feel comfortable with that? Cool. So what that's doing, just if you want to know, is this really opening up that back line, getting the blood, blood pumping in it, and re reinforcing the back, actually, in a really great way. So the half Lay lunge. Length and strength and, and stability in that midriff yeah. and that lumbar. Openness and mobility in the hip joint and everything from the foot to the hip. We're gonna talk about that also in part two. Yeah, feet are amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so taking a, a stance you might, so do, do one or two to see where you fall because we're not doing a full lunge. You're keeping this back leg straight. Now, you some the pelvis facing forward. Yes. So you want that's the thing that you want to make sure is that if you put both of your hands right on your right on your hip bones here, right on the the prominence, they should always be facing forward. So if you find that you're kind of tilting off to one side, it's because this hip flexor over here is too tight and it's pulling you. It's not letting you rotate this way. Right, and so this is all about hip flexors. It's about lengthening this one, strengthening this one. So the other thing to note is that when you bend forward, you don't really want this front knee going over your toe. That's too much, right? You don't want that. So you're just... You could do a check so that this knee is right over the ankle. Mm -hmm. Think warrior one or lunge variation if you're a yoga person right so just just forward. gently dipping into these so that you're feeling a stretch on this side and then pushing back up with this side because we really if we're sitting all the time this gets shortened we want to open it right so do that you know ten times whatever and then switching sides 
getting this check where your where your knee should be, dropping so in. With with any of these exercises, this is like midday workplace every hour doing a few of these having an awareness of symmetry mm -hmm. and midline and elongation and stability in the spine in the spinal curves is what can make this more meaningful it's not like this is jazzercise midday you know it's more like tuning in using Check your, in. your awareness and your breath with your body to destagnate the effects of being in sustained sedentary postures of modernity. Yeah, right. and that's a really great point about asymmetry is because I know for myself immediately, <clears throat> this side, this hip flexor for me is way tighter than this side, right? So that tells me that if I'm doing my yoga practice or if I'm doing any type of practice to kind of give that some low, you know? Um, so the other one, the ski poles, that we don't really need to belabor that anymore. The main point is, Keeping your core nice and strong, making sure, checking in on your pelvis, right? Make sure that it's in the right position, holding that with your core, and then back and forth. Intentional change. Yeah? Awesome. <laughs> I love this one. I feel... Okay, so when you're at work, just so, do it. Like, people are going to be like, what's going on over there? And then they're going to come ask you questions. And check it right? with your shoulder joint as you're sure. doing it. You might find that your shoulder joint is here and you're going like this. And you well, can't get The that. shoulder, and we'll talk about this in part two, November 19th. <laughs> part two. <so> <laughs> <laughs> the, look at how much movement the shoulder has available it's to the it. Most you may find you're doing this, and, you know, you may bring your shoulder, you might hug that down and connect it a little bit to, yeah. to your core more. Yeah, so. Right, as opposed to just having it up here, you know. You, you're engaging that. Yeah, because one of, that's great, because one of the things that this is working is what a muscle called latissimus, which is huge. It attaches basically on the rim of the pelvis, it and comes up, up the side. To the arm. And it attaches on the arm, and it's a major, that's, whenever, have you ever been ski pulling or something, you, and the next day all right here, you're like, oh my God, it's really sore. It's this muscle, right? So it's also responsible for scapular control. So if you're doing that and you feel like one of your one of your scapula is being really squirrely, as Quinn said, pin it, roll it, pin it down, feel it there, and then start again. Ski pull away. Okay. Overhead. Overhead press. All right. Also another simple one. Again, I like to take an athletic posture. That's just me. You don't have to. And when you're pressing. The press is not as, to me, as important as the squeezing down. So when you're pressing up, you're you're making sure to to stay elongated and stay open, right? So if you if you catch if you're finding yourself up here, you know that you need to open, right? So pressing up and on the way down, that's where I find a major part of the dysfunction patterns are because and if you go slowly, go slowly, squeeze like you're pulling your like you're trying to squeeze your elbows together. You ever, does it feel weird anywhere? Oh, I have a tear here, actually. Okay, so you so be then, careful. Then there. in in front might yep. be a little bit better. So is uh, instead of here, mm -hmm. that forty five is what we'll use, or you know even just in front like this. Well, and you could do something more like this if that's easier. Mm -hmm. Where you're opening, just yeah, to create yeah, yeah. mobility in your shoulder mm -hmm. joints. So if going up is not. So that's the other beauty of these techniques is you can pick anything you like. This is just a stagnation reducer that we like, right? You can do whatever you want. And then, okay, and then squeezing on the way down. It's super important. And then this one, this one just feels so good. This is going to calm your nervous system down. I love it. This okay. is sort of like the elegant door jam shoulder okay. opener. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You're hanging on the door jam. Mm-hmm. So bring your arms a little bit higher so that you're creating this. So, yeah. Well, okay, so, so you're creating, you basically want to be in this line. So below, if you can do it, right? Because sometimes we're really, really tight right here and it's hard to get there. But if you're down here, it's going to work too. That's fine. But optimally, look at Quinn. He's doing it beautifully. Mm-hmm. Nice athletic stance. And squeezing, do, can you do that one more time? What's really great about this is see how his back squeezes right here? You can put a pencil in here. That is good function of the back. And a lot of people can't do that. And it's not, it's not your fault, it's sitting's fault, right? 
um, because you're getting overstretching in this direction that we can't, we have a hard time squeezing back. Um, so that was beautiful. Um, anyway, those are the things. And so you just do them. You do them in a sequence. You do 10 squats, 10 uh, lunges on each side. Well, these are also, I would, I would add that these, what was it? She just said, are you going to remember them? Well, well, that's actually why I named them actually like ski poles. Like, because there were ski poles before. It's actually, I was trying to make it as easy to remember as possible. Yeah, sorry. I mean, this is obviously not an exhaustive list of options for exercises that destagnate, but these are helpful and they have a little bit of a wake up yeah. energy Move to the them. They're a bit stimulating in their characteristic. They're not pacifying um, because that's that's usually what people who, who are at a desk job will need during the day. Something to kind of, mm, you know, move move that blood, yeah. circulate a bit. Body but, you know, changing body positions is a big generalized takeaway of this lecture. It's not good to be sta in stasis in one posture all day long. If you are a person that is standing most of the time in your job, then you, you will benefit from sitting down. If you're sitting a lot, you will benefit from getting up more. Totally. Right? But that changing of position is good. Yeah. And this is something that is happening to us. Americans are spending much more time on the laptop. And, you know, you got you got to maintain. you got to maintain to feel right. good. You know? We've got five minutes. Yeah. These guys so, should come teach our staff that like, right? everybody should be learning yeah. just these exercises. Yeah, sure. yeah these are super fun. Awesome I love this. Are. Save me in school. <laughs> It'd be great. We'd um, love to. Yeah. yeah, totally. Um, so we kind of already talked about this. I'm not we're not going to belabor this point because we only have a couple of minutes. But this is just a self check in, right? So first of all, you're checking for asymmetries when you're doing stuff. Second of all, assuming you know what all this is, right? It's, but it's pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So hip flexors are in the front, hamstrings are in the back. Uh, do uh, hamstrings. So yeah. So basic. Can I interrupt? So basically what this says is you can do a check-in with your foundation with what is carrying your spine around in space by assessing the tightness in the front of the hip, everything down to the foot, and in the outside of the leg, all the way down to the foot, and the inside, all the way down to the foot, and then the outside, or, or the, the back line, all the way down to the foot. So you've got all of those four sides, so to speak, of the yeah. hip joint that inform the spine. Go ahead with what you're going to say. Yeah, no, yeah. and that's, that's exactly right. And these are, these are some common fall, uh, pain patterns in relation to those tight areas. Um, but, you know, everyone's different. Um, so, great. So this is kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the lifestyle question, right? We all... We all have goals for what we want to do, but it's not always possible to do them all. <laughs> um, so I think we won't spend as much time on this slide, I, but what, what I do want to say, and I guess we can go here, is can that... I, what's Maslow's hierarchy? <laughs> yeah. That's something I'm like sure. That's yeah. a, a it's pyramid like of need, like from basic, so at the very basic level, um, your, your needs are room and board, you know, to be considered, you know, you're, you're, you're doing, you have that need met. If you don't have room and board, if you don't have food and shelter, the, the needs above that, you, you don't feel safe. So safety, finances, uh, love and belonging, having a sense of self-esteem or self-actualization are much more difficult if these found it, if, if these foundational levels are not taken care of. So yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of needs actuates itself in that self-actualization, that top level of the pyramid but of this, you know, this hierarchy um, in terms of, you know, human wellness. Do you have that sense of um, of esteem in your life? Do you yeah. have those? So this is sort of like a psychological implication of our lifestyle design for pain-free living list 
you know, if somebody is really, really under a lot of emotional stress, stress. they may not be able to be living a pain-free life. You know, they may just be stressed at their desk all the yeah. time. And if they got counseling to work through some of the things at the root of that, um, their desk job wouldn't be as painful. Yeah, we you know? find in, in our in our office, we what we end up finding is that that's this is really impacted by stress management because any any one of these can be a source of extreme stress. Even if you have, even if theoretically you have them, if you don't have the perception is there, then you don't. What do you have, right? And so, what what Quinn is trying to say too is, and, and we see this all the time, which is really hard. It's getting a little bit off topic, but there are some people that will be treating, and they they reach this plateau, and they don't get a hundred percent better, and it's not because of biomechanics, right? It's because of it's because of really jacked up nervous systems, stress, emotional stress, the body keeps the score, right? Our bodies hold on to pain, and this is something that I think isn't talked about enough, um, but it happens. I mean, pain is not just physical. Um, so I think... There's also, just to point out, there's, a, there's a, a relationship, a very easily seen, and we see it a lot in, in our clinical work, um, there's a relationship between anxiety and pain. That's the, the, those two come in, you know, musculoskeletal pain that could be just nuts and bolts, biomechanical stuff, can be associated with anxiety a yeah, lot. We see totally. that big one. Um, so the main the main point that I really want to make on this slide, as far as um, time's sake, is that there's tons of things that you could do, but I, I think the major point is that self-care sometimes isn't enough in that you need somebody to kind of set you on the right path so to speak um, that's actually kind of where our name comes from uh, clear path our clinic is right down the street um, and, and you know so once you once your body identifies these issues and you start the healing process you can then snowball that into your own care and that's our goal that's part of the reason why we're teaching this is that we want to empower you to keep your health long term and will be the piece maybe in the beginning to say, all right, let's do this, let's reorganize this, let's reset this, be on your way, right? You know, and, and that's, that's a, you know, whatever, but the point is, is that sometimes it's useful to just get the ball rolling and then have the tools yeah, to stick here yeah, yeah. uh, I would also add to that that self-care is, I mean, f f taking care of yourself, self-care, self-maintenance, is um, essential and when somebody's really motivated in self-care we'll make a dietary dietary recommendations we'll make some recommendations about uh, the types of activities a person's doing maybe they need to see a counselor um, and they the more that a person engages in those things Results the, the less the less yeah. therapeutic intervention they need at all totally. you know or or the therapeutic interventions that they do seek, that they do receive, take them a much further than uh, um, an individual who's just going to come into the clinic and say, "I have back pain, fix me," and I'm not going to, I'm not going to change anything about my lifestyle that relates to my back pain. But I want you to fix me. Right? Very different. Very different image of success. Um, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, so if do you guys have questions or anything that you have more inquiry about? Yes. Yeah. Did you write down the period of things that I can see? I think. I can go back a slide. What do you yeah. what do you need? I just pyramid. can't see the things on the pyramid even when I oh, oh. photograph them. I've got like basic needs mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and like safety <laughs> and financial security. Oh, good idea. <laughs> I can look it up on Wikipedia. So these are for you all. Did you have a question? Question? Okay, I thought you had your hand raised. So. All right. Oh, there's two. There's two each. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, what happened? Oh. So you can just hand that one back. Yeah. Uh, Where are you guys located? We are on State Street. Oh, State Street. Got past it. the State House at the corner of State and Bailey. Got it. So, the address there is one four seven. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we'll look we forward to seeing you again on November nineteenth. <laughs> He's so excited about this one. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Well, we'll hang around for a minute if you guys want to, you know, ask any questions. Um, There's ask the book. also there are also surveys from the co-op here, and if you wouldn't mind giving a few check boxes on feedback. That'll tell them how great that the 19th is projected to be. Is this is Clear Path. What's this one called? With clear Path. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was so or Resolving Workplace Body Pain. <clears throat> cool. Well, thank you for coming. We really appreciate it. It was fun. I broke a sweat. It was great. <laughs>